Pierce on his epic miniseries about the fight for LGBT rights. Okay. Okay. And if Trump's putting it all in danger. Then, view your deal for red carpet hotness. We partnered with vendors for at least half off stuff that'll give you Oscar-worthy glam. Let's go! Let's fire up Hot Topics with Whoopi. Such a One of the honest moments in an uh, Oscar show that I can remember. But, but if you missed it, take a look. And the Academy Award. <laughs> for Best Picture. You're awful. Come on. La La Land. There's a mistake. Moonlight, you guys won Best Picture. Moonlight, Best Picture. Guys, this is uh, very unfortunate what happened. Personally, I blame Steve Harvey for this. <laughs> it was funny. It was funny. <laughs> so, uh, you know, apparently Warren Beatty was handed the wrong envelope. Uh. <laughs> well, you know, Warren's looking at me thinking, did I sleep with Emma Stone or was it Sharon Stone? <laughs> <laughs> Who was it again? Uh, hey, you so I was laughing earlier with Sunny because originally when I saw it, people were like, oh, he didn't know what to do, so he was looking yeah. to her. But when you think about if that really played out, if I were handing it to Joy, I'd kind of be like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. warning with my eyes. Yeah. And he doesn't do it, he goes like this. Yep, here you go. <laughs> yep. It's like, you figure like, it out. Exactly. Figure it out. So I, I was wondering, I was like, oh my gosh, did he throw her under the bus? Or, you know, did he not want to take like, responsibility for this. it? But I just think it was just a, a big mix up. Yeah. But what was funny to me was Steve Harvey tweeted out, call me Warren Beatty. I can help you get through this. <laughs> Hashtag the Oscars. <laughs> Which I love. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's okay. You know, I think when you watch something, you have this expectation that they're supposed to be superhuman. These things happen. It's okay. You know, I was Actually, watching at home. This is not supposed to happen. Right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because it's never happened, it's never happened before. Yeah. And the reason it doesn't, it's not supposed to happen, is because when you get those envelopes, mm -hmm. it goes in sequence. Yeah. You know, this is the envelope for this, right. this is the envelope for this. So somewhere, either. Her envelope, she put it down, maybe she, you know, maybe they, stone. somebody picked it up stone, and thought yeah. it had fallen or something. Yeah, something. But it just, it just, it, it, that, because they price Waterhouse, and they're looking in to see, because they feel what this happened. is their mess up, mm -hmm. um, has prided themselves on the 80 years or 79 years of this, of saying, you know, there's only one card, one card per right. performer. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's kind of a, uh, a crazy mix-up, but that's the Academy Awards, it's live, and that's why you want somebody like Jimmy yeah. Kimmel, because oh, if you he, need to be yeah. live, you need yeah. somebody At who least can do it. It knocked Trump off the front page for a second. For a second. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Um, I want to say that Price Waterhouse Cooper um, did issue a statement on this mix-up. They say, we sincerely apologize to Moonlight, La La Land, Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, and Oscar viewers for the error that was made during the award announcement for Best Picture. The presenters had mistakenly been given the wrong category envelope and when discovered was immediately corrected. We are currently investigating, just as you said, Whoopi, mm -hmm. how this could have happened and deeply regret that this occurred. Yeah. See, when something like this happens to me, though, it's more important how you handle it. And I think the way they handled it was so professional yeah. and yeah. so well, nice and it just okay. showed their humanity. Yeah, well, but they're actors, you know. They're, yeah, yeah. Well, they're people. Not everybody can do that, though. Well, a lot of people that, get that's really why these, But that's why these guys are these guys. Well, I appreciate you know? them for because I don't know that I'd be able to, yeah. to handle no, that you, so well. You can learn. So. Yeah. But you might not be able to do it yet. Not but yet. I can promise what you, you not yet. Something, but you learn how to do that because yeah. you're on live. So you do it every day. Yeah. Yeah. I would have held on a little tighter if they ripped it out of my hands. I think as an Oscar winner, were you just 
shocked when you heard uh, about this? I was just surprised because, you know, I know that when they give you that envelope, people hold on to those envelopes. Oh, they keep So there's them. only supposed to be one. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. For so that this doesn't happen. Because can you imagine if a mix up like this happened in the middle of the show? And yeah. somebody got the wrong, you know, yeah. so it's a, it, it's, oh, so it would be you know, announcing an offer yeah, that so wasn't maybe, given out. Maybe yet. something, uh, maybe there was a duplicate made and, you know, they, they're not looking at these. They're just putting them in the envelopes, in the correct envelopes. So it could have been a duplicate card. But, you know, it's, listen, it's a live show. I know. Yeah. Stuff happens. <laughs> and I, I know a lot of people were sort of freaking out because they thought it was going to be a political Oscar mm -hmm. show. And I have to say, I think... <laughs> Everybody at the Oscar said, oh, wait, this is about the movies and what we're doing. Forget yeah. about him. Yeah. <laughs> Forget yeah. about him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Here and there. Here and there a joke. Yeah. yeah. I mean, jokes you expected from the host. Yeah. Right. You know, the artist, except for, of course, the, one of the artists who wasn't there, who should have been there, uh -huh. is the gentleman who uh, had been put yeah, out with director. the band. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, the summer was there, but, um, and a lot came from Jimmy uh, Kimmel, I'm told, a, a lot of the funny, yeah. so yeah. take a look. This broadcast is being watched live by millions of Americans and around the world in more than 225 countries that now hate us. I want to say thank you to President Trump. I mean, remember last year when it seemed like the Oscars were racist? <laughs> you know, we're more than two hours into the show and Donald Trump hasn't tweeted at us once. <laughs> and I'm starting to get worried about him. <laughs> That's cute. Because, I mean, was he watching? You would, you would oh, think sure he was watching, watching right? Sure he, he probably was. has 10 screens up and it's like CNN, yeah. you know. Like, what are yeah. they going to say about me? Yeah, exactly. Because they didn't have anything to say about you. Oh, yeah. Oh, but, you know, we do have something to say about ESPN. Congratulations for their winning their very first Oscar for the documentary O.J. Yeah. Made in America. Yeah, that was yeah. Good. So they won last night, which was wonderful. Yeah. And, but it, it started, yesterday started out on a... Quite a sad note mm. with the loss of Bill Paxton, I we know were told. Yes. He was complications uh, during a surgery. He's 61 years old. That's you know? so young. And you That's, knew him. Yeah, I knew him. And I knew Judge Wapner. Oh, I mean, Judge, Judge Wapner passed away. You know, oh, yeah. Judge Wapner, y'all. I know. People's I mean, Court. He was People's Court. We, we the People's Court. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, Game of Thrones star Neil Fingleton, who was only 36, 36 he was yeah. the tallest man in the UK. Uh, mm -hmm. Seven. 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 seven, seven, seven. seven. What did he die of? Uh, I think complications heart. from his yeah, heart. Yeah, his heart. Oh, so it's just, it was, a, it was a, a sad, but they're all such great folks that. We got to know them, so yeah. we celebrate yeah. that. And today's Black History Month, FYI, honors a man born into slavery who rose up to become one of the foremost civil rights leaders and education pioneers in American history. Booker T. Washington founded Tuskegee Institute in 1881 and in 1901 became the first black man invited inside the White House. It wasn't his only visit. He was presidential advisor for Theodore Roosevelt <laughs> and William Taft, William Howard Taft, who sought his counsel on racial matters. <laughs> he actually got a person of color. Mm -hmm. He was also the first black person uh, on a U.S. postage stamp. See, look at Tim Washington, uh, people did learn about in school. He's one of the people that yes. we've been talking about a lot of black uh, people for over the years who ha we don't even know who they are because we haven't gotten the right education. But I think Booker T. Washington, right? Yeah, that yeah. Was didn't, we yep. all learned about yeah, him. That's and true. Frederick Douglass. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some of us learned about him. I'm still learning about him. He's well, doing some good things. Well, he, he, right. He's running for the Senate in Oklahoma. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And you know how you're always bragging about. You dated Abe Lincoln? Yeah. You, you dated Fred? <laughs> we'll be right back. Still ahead, Trump's media giving the correspondence dinner, barring reporters from briefings. But is it the media's fault? This week got the hottest topics around. <gasps> Crazy! That's right. <laughs> and we can't wait to hang with Aubrey Plaza, Patrick Stewart, Jennifer Beals, and... Wait for it, the one and only 
Jennifer Lopez comes to our house. Wow! That is so exciting! Yes! It's one red hot week on The View on ABC. Still ahead, When We Rise star David Hyde Pierce. Plus, view your deal for Oscar glam. We partnered with vendors for at least half off stuff that'll make you red carpet hot. You know who's at war with the media? <laughs> keeps on building. And uh, this weekend he found an ally in conservative political commentator, Ben Stein. Take a look. I wouldn't say that all of the media is the enemy of the people, but look, every day you pick up the New York Times, every day they're slamming, slamming, slamming him. I'm a great fan of CNN. I watch it quite faithfully. Every day, CNN is slamming him, slamming him, slamming him. Every day, they're looking for a scandal. They're just turning the woods upside down, looking for a scandal. With all due respect, I don't blame him for being furious at them. And I think he's got a lot of company. All right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so the question is, is the media too tough on him? <laughs> I mean, didn't he set this tone years ago? I mean, he really liked the media when he kept insisting... Obama wasn't born here. Right. Yeah. Ben, I mean, Stein, ben you know? Stein famously said, I don't think any president has been more wrongly persecuted than Nixon, ever. Yeah. I just think he was a saint. That's what so, he yes. is. So, he, yeah. Yeah. so he's comparing <laughs> Trump to the only president who ever resigned. Yes. A president who committed a felony, who obstructed justice. And this is who he's, con he's comparing him to. And he was also um, Nixon's speechwriter and yeah. his lawyer. Yeah. Um, he also said this during that interview. He said the media picked one little tiny thing that he did, meaning Nixon, one tiny, tiny little thing that he yeah. did, yeah. one tiny little thing which was just to discuss a cover-up. No, I mean, no, no. So I, you know, well, I think what they don't acknowledge... The material on Watergate because it's so similar in a certain way. Or even just watch the movie, All the Presidents Met, which is yeah. great. Yeah, I mean, just watch that. I think what they don't acknowledge is Trump's role in all this. That, I mean, Russia is not a small story. You know, Trump feeds mm -hmm. into this by doing and saying ridiculous things. He's tweeting at people. He's saying things about foreign countries that could potentially cause problems for us in the future. So it's one thing to have a general conversation about media bias. That's fair. We can do that. But it's another thing to say that the media is here criminalizing Trump when he's played a role in a lot of those things. And a lot of those questions that they're asking with respect Back to him, whether you like him or not, they're fair yeah. questions, and that's what the media is supposed well, to do. The media is not supposed right to be your friend. Yeah. It's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to make life hard for you. They're supposed to ask right. tough questions, and if you don't like it, then you're not up for the job. What, left what or right. Trump is doing right now? Wait a second. What I think he's doing. And this whole thing that the, the media is the enemy, etc. He is inoculating himself against what is coming down from Russia. Yes. They are investigating this cri the crimes that they have committed before the election and maybe after. Mm -hmm. And so by vilifying the press, by saying it's all fake, by saying don't believe it, yeah. when that, all of this comes down, he can say they lied. Yeah. The press is don't making this up. This is called an inoculation. Like but a, I think but that, that's, that's that relies on the though. assumption, if he does that, it relies yeah. on the assumption that everyone's an idiot. Well, because they well, have to well, believe I mean, come on. Stupid. People are believing this fake well, news moniker well, over yeah, and over well, and over again. Are. You know, but I, you know, part of this is our own fault. Because we let stuff go for so long. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't question, we didn't stop stuff yeah. mid rap. So yeah. part well, we of this did. we did on this show. Yeah, but you know, we yes, we did. Well, we you haven't know, given him a break. Well, <laughs> it's, but it's not about giving him a break. It's not about giving him a break. My God, you know, I I can go back eight years from the time that Obama got in. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. let's let's talk about when people are being crappy to you. You know, I, I have no sympathy, man. Stop lying to the people. Then maybe people will stop trying to f trip you up. Yeah. Well, you know what, what is, uh, something that we haven't talked about, uh, because it happened on Friday, we didn't talk about it on the show, was that the White House barred reporters from a press, a press briefing. Sean Spicer blocked CNN, the New York Times, the LA Times, Politico, the BBC, BuzzFeed. Yeah. BuzzFeed, from a press briefing. We've really got to talk about things like that. And what was surprising to me but this was is that not the first time he's, he's well, you know, it's not had it's, it's unprecedented, though, that he picked, uh, the, the administration picked.
certain outlets but that they wouldn't been, allow he's the been, press briefing. He's been handpicked. Listen, he's done several press briefings where there has been no one who would say, hey, sorry, that's not a fact. That's a lie. Or pressing him. He, listen, this is really on the Republicans, and this is on us. The Constitution says mm -hmm. a free press is what has to be. Yes. We are entitled. We, if we are America, that's what we have. We have a free press. We have the right Absolutely. to assemble mm -hmm. and say we don't like what's going on. And the second the press disappears in this country, this is no longer America. Yeah. Well, one thing I would note that I think is kind of a bait and switch. We spoke about it before. There are times where Trump does things that are super easy about the size of his own. You know, he argues the size of who came to witness his inauguration. And the the, big, we, big crowd. And we run, the stories are headlined. They're yeah. on the lower third yeah. and everything. And then he does something on the side. I do mm -hmm. think there's something to be said for sometimes grabbing the low-hanging fruit and making it the headline of the day. Because oftentimes there's something coming right behind it oh, yeah. that isn't always doubled down that's on. Your, that's your well, point, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a lot of stuff been coming around, <laughs> coming out. You know, folks with severe mental disabilities given the ability to go get a gun. Yeah. That's an issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if you want to be... Ben! They slipped Stein, yeah. listen. Oh, Ben. You want to <laughs> complain about something? Complain about that. Yeah. Because that <laughs> is an issue. Not whether his feelings are hurt, because he hurt everybody's feelings. He hurt everybody's feelings. Yeah, all of a sudden, he's so sensitive. He's very sensitive. So people calls calls the press, he calls the press. He calls the press the enemy of the people. Yes. They're the enemy. Opposition maybe say, if he had said he's my enemy, maybe that would have yes, made a little bit of sense. sense. They're not the enemy of the people. Maybe yeah. you don't like them. Just That's give all. credit, though, also to people from the press, Fox News, CNN. People are coming together and saying, <laughs> a little we bit. as a united press. I saw Chef well, Smith. I saw Brett Baer. Yeah. Yeah. I no, saw a lot of Chris O'Reilly. They should have participated. In yeah. that press Where briefing. are they? They've got it. They should have banded to walk together. Out. Yeah, you they, well, he that. didn't participate, this and I think uh, another organization didn't participate. And we're not participating in this rest right. of this conversation right <laughs> now because we gotta go. We'll be right back. All right. In just because we're road tripping it. So, um, you know. Apparently, for the first time in about 36 years, the new guy says he's not going to show the up for the guy. White House <laughs> What's his name? correspondence dinner. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th there have been several presidents who, who didn't make all of them, but never in their first year. Yeah. And, uh, the, you know, people bring up Reagan. Well, Reagan couldn't attend because he was recovering from being shot. Uh, yeah. But he did right. call it. He did call he called him. Um, and so he said, so the new guy's saying, you know, I'm I'm not going because they're so mean to me and Yeah. I just, you know <laughs> well, you, can't, you can't go out and say that these are the enemy of the people and then play nicely with them. It what happened higher. to all those people? You're trying to tell them these are the enemy, and now you're playing with them. So, so you think it's consistent? I mean, do you give, does he get points for that? I think it's consistent I mean, uh, this, for this thing because he did okay in the Alfred Smith uh, thing. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, the and one where he embarrassed his wife. Well, he, yeah. he made a joke about Melania, but he actually looked like he had a little bit of a sense of humor. And then Comedy oh. Central roasted him once, and he, he went with the... Pummel, yeah. the pummeling then. So this time it's like, well, I already said these are the enemy, so I have to be consistent. I don't think it's consistency driving it, though. I think it's a thin-skinned fear of yeah. what will come down well, on him. Yeah, the only yeah. thing thinner was... than his skin is his hair. Well, yeah. it's, it's really what drove him to run for president was yeah. that whole roast by President Obama. Well, which which he started. Yes, yes, Remember. he did start. Yeah. But you but had a great idea. I think it would be really cool if Hillary Clinton came and spoke oh. instead. <laughs> because I think the real president... Well, it brings, wow. it brings back the idea that do you show up and mm -hmm. speak to an issue or do you protest and boycott and I think when he opens up a space another leader needs to come out because mm -hmm. that's what the events about and I think it'd be she really cool. I'd like though. to see I'd she like would. to see Alec Baldwin come in his place. Yeah, that's <laughs> going yeah. I, I think that would be hilarious right I mean I think Steve you know, Bannon should do it. No, no, I do. I think the real president. I said I, feel like I think Steve yeah. Bannon should do it. Yeah. Maybe he could come. Oh, yeah. He's running the show behind the scenes. It's gonna go from funny yeah. to like this pink face no, screaming. I'll tell you what I think would make the greatest impact if all the previous living presidents would show up. Oh. Bill Clinton, that Jimmy Carter, awesome. Herbert Walker Bush. 
uh, George Herbert Walker and George W. And Bush Obama. and President Obama, of course. All of them should just show up and say, this is what America is. We respect the press. That would show that him would be, that's what a better suggestion. Yeah. That would be great. I call on you, Presidents of America. Yeah, that would be great. Right. So. The thing is, there's been animosity before. Like, you can look back. President Obama, we talked about this before, had made comments about Fox News being yeah. a problem. But this is beyond animosity, because now you've grouped everyone together. And you've mm -hmm. made the press yeah. in general. You haven't even singled out one person who maybe crossed the line, in your opinion. But you've made everyone the enemy. And that is a problem, because you're the president of the free world. And without the press, it's not a free world. That's right. So yeah. that's a real problem for everybody. And it's also a chance for when, when, when presidents go to these things, you get to know them as a person. Which they're help funny. Maybe. They're relatable. No. Maybe it would be helpful to them. The so there's right. laughter. Right. Right. You already listen. You already know who he is. Yeah. I, I, you know, I know you. Everybody tries to say, well, maybe the, right. he showed you who he is. Right. But if he's not looking to appeal, he's not looking to appeal. He's not looking to appeal. He's looking to appeal to people, though. No, I mean, he's looking to say to his base, look at how they treat me. Yes. Well, remember what you did. You started it with Obama. Yeah. With eight years and you're not the real president. Deal with it, my friend. We'll be right back. Why are you telling me this? Emmy winner David Hyde Pierce on joining Whoopi and the all-star cast of the epic TV miniseries event, When We Rise. The View wants to send a grand prize winner and their guests to the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. Part of a cast that includes Emmy and Tony winner David Hyde Pierce in the mini miniseries event When We Rise, which chronicles the battle for our gay rights in America, really. A battle that's unfortunately still being fought today. So please welcome the fabulous and amazing David Hyde Pierce. <laughs> so, so, David, so you get the script. Yes. You see that it's going to be on ABC, mm -hmm. and you, you read it. Yeah. What goes through your mind? Uh, well, I, you know, I thought they sent me the wrong envelope. It was like, a, a, it's a huge, you know, it's a huge epic thing, but it's about LGBT rights, and it's not what you expect to see on a network like this. You expect it on, you know, what, HBO or whatever, or uh, uh, something late at night that no one watches. And. Uh, it's a big change, I think, in the country, at least in my lifetime, mm -hmm. that such a thing is possible. And I got to say, given sort of the climate today, you know, we filmed this last year, yeah. when all things seemed possible, I don't know whether this would have gotten made. Uh, uh, yeah. In the current climate, is interesting. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, wow. You know. And of course, we saw, we were reminded uh, last week that the, the fight, these fights are not over. I mean, so. What are you thinking when you hear about all these rollbacks by the the new guy? Oh, it's uh, it's you know the new guy. Um, it's it seems um, it seems heartless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it Man, seems it me. seems thoughtless. I feel like maybe the idea is if the country becomes sufficiently um, heartless and selfish then Mexico and the rest of the world will line up to pay for the wall just to keep all the Americans in. Not that far off of a theory. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you know, we know that you're a very private guy. You really, uh, you know, we don't hear a lot about your private lives, but you first spoke out about your marriage to uh, your husband, Brian, back on our show in 2009. We, ha right. we have a clip. Uh-oh. I had the experience of, like I said, having this private thing suddenly dragged out into the public and have people I don't know take a vote. I mean, can you imagine if you're married, uh, the people in your state getting together and saying, well, you know what, you're not. It was a very angry-making feeling, both in November when it was taken away from me and also this past Tuesday, sitting in front of my television, wondering, gee, I hope the Supreme Court thinks it's okay for us to be married. Excuse me, it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. so that's yeah. Well, you know, uh, Trump has said that same-sex marriage is safe. Do you believe him? I don't believe hardly anything that comes out of his mouth. So why should I believe this? He's in such a weird position. You know, we yeah. know that when he was a normal human being, he was so much more liberal in his mm -hmm. dealings and the people he hung out with and all of that. And now he's in this odd position. Yeah. Uh, and I have no idea, you know, going forward what will happen. Um, I just hope that... that uh, 
compassion rules. I, d I haven't given up hope that that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, well, there's a religion. But it's up to yeah. us. Well, he's listening to the religious right also. For me, the big lesson for me, I never understood how much the president influences how the country feels, what the country feels mm -hmm. it's okay to do and say. Yeah. But knowing that, I also believe that it works the other way. Yes. And we have a responsibility not to just say, boy, what a, what a, I, I just so hate what he's doing. No. Yeah. To, to uh, did you see Mark Rylance on the Oscars last oh, night I gave the most him. beautiful speech about opposition yeah. and saying that opposition is vital. It's vital in sports, in yeah. the theater, in life. But the trick is opposition without hate. hate. Yes. How do you do that? That's yes. the... Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I hope programs like this help because this is an amazing show. In this, you play a homophobic father who thinks he can cure his son. Yeah. Did that strike a nerve with you? Well, it, first of all, it's true. I mean, this is uh, based on Cleve Jones. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the show is based on his life. This is his actual father, who was a therapist, and actually responded to his son's coming out by saying, don't worry, it's an illness. I know how to cure it. It's electroshock, or there's other things he can do. And he absolutely meant it, and it was absolutely because he loved because and he loved feared for the lifestyle his son would enter into. Well, Mike Pence believes in that, too, a conversion therapy. Well, um, they're wrong. Yeah, yeah. No. Uh, and we're long past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but we're not. But we're not past people believing it. What you say? Uh, which is just. But that's the reality. You know, we we all we live in cities or whatever. You know, you you're blessed to live in New York where everybody just lives on the same island and they don't all agree and whatever. But we all live together. We, we get fine. along. We don't we get don't. in each other's face and say, "Don't be living your life." Yeah. And you know. That's... You grew up in a similar era to when this takes place. Yes. I don't want to date you or mm -hmm. age you. We but could though. We later. could. We could. We could go in. <laughs> that. Would be a story yeah, but did you run into any skeptics along the way that was well, uh, skeptics no i mean i came my family was my mom and dad were very conservative they were republicans yeah. um we didn't know from gay i didn't know growing up that the thing didn't exist there were no role models there were no nothing so it was not a discussion but the template that they left for me was two people who loved each other and devoted their lives to each other and took care of their families. Right. And when it turned out that I ended up being gay and met Brian, they had no idea what was going on and they welcomed him into our home and he became yeah, a part of our nice. life and was for, you know, as long as they were alive. That's well, nice. you know, a lot of people have all kinds of objections, but you know, my, I've always felt if you were concerned about gay marriage, don't marry a gay person. <laughs> It's true. It's true, you know. Because otherwise, I don't want anybody telling me who I can love or how I can love them or what to do with my family. Right. I don't know no. anybody who wants that. When we were in California and they, you know, uh, made same-sex marriage suddenly illegal. Yep. Uh, it's like, you know, people don't don't be coming into my house and taking away my guns. Don't come into my house and take away my wedding ring. There you That's go. Right. Yeah. You know? That's, That's right. I love that. So, our thanks to the fabulous and wonderful David Hyde Pierce. <laughs> and I am happy and thrilled to say that When We Rise premieres tonight at 9 p.m. right here on ABC. And ABC, thanks for this. You really did us a solid. We'll be right back. Next, and the Oscar goes to... View your deal. We partnered with vendors for at least half off products that'll make you red carpet hot. red carpet last night and we're bringing that heat to view your deal we partnered with vendors for at least half off products that'll give you some oscar glam but it's only while supplies last so let's get shopping with lifestyle expert greta monahan many great things for you. Last night was all about red carpet jewelry. Yes. I love bold glam that you can either wear with jeans or t-shirts throughout at night. Pieces. Statement. Take a look at these. Silk tassel earrings, right? With a hematite encrusted stone hematite. top. Hematite. Hey. Original on these is $48. Today's deal, $24 for a Seven gold colors. You can't That's go wrong. Awesome. That's you can't awesome. go wrong. 
That's like a party in your ear. Now, so this is light stem. We know all of the stars look gorgeous on the red carpet, right? Yeah. It's because of their everyday beauty routines. I mean, they really make sure they take care of their skin. This is light stem, and this is for wrinkles mini. This is an FDA clear device yeah. that helps smooth what the wrinkles. What do you wrinkles. do? You use it smooth every, my wrinkles. Use it every day. Look, with light technology, put it on that area for three minutes, and that's it. Original price. $169. Today's deal, $84.50 with free shipping. I already look younger. All right. Savings of 50%. That's great. Now, these, I have two great devices. Is this another gadget? Illuminage. Yes. I love gadgets. Illuminage gadget. Beauty. So check it out. Precise touch. This is a hair removal device. So this is FDA cleared, both Does of these. Hurt? Not at all, painless. Okay. You use it for a couple of minutes, once a week, and you will end up with smooth, silky skin. The other one, if you're like me, this is actually knee bright. And look at this little guy, you do this under the eye. It's specially designed for the under eye area. Oh, for like so dark, for circles. dark circles. Lines, to smooth it all out. Oh. Incredibly easy to do, and you just do it at home. These originally start at $129 to $245. Today's deal, $64.50 to $122.50. Oh, and free shipping. That's a good deal because those gadgets can get expensive. It's so expensive it to do expensive. those treatments. Yeah. Okay, this I love because this is a, this is a makeup game changer in a teeny Ooh, tiny little... Oh, they feel good too. Yeah, inexpensive. This is a silicone makeup applicator. That's why it feels good, it's silicone. Okay. <laughs> it takes the place of your sponge. No more bacteria on your skin. Easy to clean with soap and water and you just use a tiny bit of makeup, it doesn't soak it up. Like for this? Yeah. You just put a little bit, and look at this. This you can use right in the eyes and use the larger parts for all over neck and face. Am I I feel so like... easy and so clean. Original price on this, 20 bucks. Today's deal, 10 bucks. Oh, that's so cute. Come on, that's such a great that's great. Now, this is going to freak you out. Okay, these are so cool. Baby oh, foot I love exfoliant these. foot feel. Now, these have a rep, you guys. These are amazing. So, this is an exfoliant foot peel. This is not just a scrub. You and you not snip just the for top, women. Snip the top. Yep. Put that this little booty on more. while you watch the view. Yes. And this actually has 17 natural essential ingredients that soak into your foot. So over three to oh, seven days, days foot. it <laughs> peels off and you reveal baby soft feet. This is no joke. Original price, $25. Today's deal, twelve fifty with free shipping. Baby foot, I bet, because it's soft as a baby's. You know it. You know what? <laughs> All right, Kiss products. This is InstaWave, and this is very cool. I didn't plug it in because I didn't want to burn us, but this is not just a regular iron. It comes in three different sizes, small, medium, large. You put your hair in, and it's got directions, you guys. So no more having one side look better than the other because it literally what does it do? It your hair for you. Yes, it twists your hair, and you drop a perfect, perfect curl or wave. Oh, my God. Original price, $50. Today's deal, $22 for savings of 56%. That solves the problem of all the curls going the wrong way. <laughs> And the clock is ticking, people. You have 24 hours to grab any of these exclusive deals at viewyourdeal.com. And members of our audience are going home with a makeup drop applicator and baby foot peel. Tara Setmeyer joins the political view to talk about how she's handling Trump's war on the media. Hey, welcome back. So, um, so when we were backstage, I, I have to tell you, I didn't understand what a baby foot peel was. I thought you were peeling baby feet. <laughs> Like, why would you peel a baby's foot? <laughs> you want your your foot to feel as soft as a baby's bum. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's what I, I'm adding this commentary, by the way. No right. one told me that. Well, well, I'm, well, I'm baby assuming. exfoliation. It's I can't. A, a, yeah, I just had a whole thing. I thought, why would anybody want to do that to their baby's no. feet? No. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, you know, I'm slow back. Baby's like, this is pointless. <laughs> yeah, you know? And you know what? I... I just want to say, you know, tonight when we rise oh, premieres yeah. on ABC. So excited! And, uh, you know, we were talking about 
what people's rights are, what their rights, you know, be, if they're gay rights or civil rights or women's rights or man's rights, all, these rights all affect us. Yes. Yes. So if you don't want people in your business, you have to understand people don't want you in their business yes. right. for things that have, you know, impact on their families. With your family, you want to you want to hold on to those ideals and that you raise your family. And I think everyone should be protected. I mean, I think MLK said it the best: "An injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere." Yeah, and, and we are think, all connected. I think getting to know stories and faces is the most critical because you don't have to prove to someone you deserve a right when they connect with you because then. It just is there. Yeah. I think so many people haven't known maybe a gay someone that's gay or trans nowadays yeah. Yeah. Well, they or transgender know. that it's a mystery. It doesn't have a face. Well, Once well, you know the faces, it's, yeah. it's not it's, a. It's all. It's all these rights. It's all these rights that we fight for. Our personal rights mm -hmm. to make the decisions for our families. Like we make a decision to say to you, thank you for coming. Yeah. We want you to ha have a great day and take a little time to enjoy the view. <laughs>
has prided themselves on the 80 years or 79 years of this, of saying, you know, there's only one card, one card per right. performer. Yeah. So it, it's a, it's kind of a, uh, a crazy mix-up, but that's the Academy Awards, it's live, and that's why you want somebody like Jimmy yeah. Kimmel, because oh, you need to be yeah. live, you need yeah. somebody At who least can do it. It knocked Trump off the front page for a second. For a second. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Um, to say that Price Waterhouse Cooper um, did issue a statement on this mix-up. They say we sincerely apologize to Moonlight, La La Land, Warren Beatty, Faye Dunaway, and Oscar viewers for the error that was made during the award announcement for Best Picture. The presenters had mistakenly been given the wrong category envelope, and when discovered, was immediately corrected. We are currently investigating, just as you said, Whoopi, mm -hmm. how this could have happened, and deeply regret that this occurred. Yeah. See, when something like this happens to me, though, it's more important how you handle it. And I think the way they handled it was so professional yeah. and yeah. so well, nice that it just good. showed their humanity. Yeah, they're actors, you know. They, yeah, well, they're people. Not everybody can do that, though. Well, a lot of people that, get that's really why in depth. These, But that's why these guys are these guys. Well, I appreciate you know? them for because I don't know that I'd be able to, yeah. to handle no, that you, so well. You can learn. So. Yeah. But you might not be able to do it yet. Not but it's, yet. I can it's promise what you, you not yet. But you learn how to do that because yeah. you're on live. So you do it every day. Yeah. I would have held on a little tighter yeah. they ripped it out of my hands. <laughs> so, right. oh, I think as, as an Oscar winner, were you just shocked when you heard um, about this? I was just surprised because you know I know that when they give you that envelope people hold on to those envelopes oh they keep so there's them. only supposed to be one oh. you see what I'm saying oh, yeah. for so that this doesn't happen because can you imagine if a mix-up like this happened in the middle of the show Oh, and yeah. somebody got the wrong, you know, yeah. so it's a, it, it's, oh, so it would be uh, announcing an yeah, so maybe, maybe yet. something, uh, maybe there was a duplicate made and, you know, they, they're not looking at these, they're just putting them in the envelopes, in the correct envelopes, so oh. could have been a duplicate card, but, you know, it's, listen, it's a live show, I know. Yeah. stuff happens, <laughs> and I, I know a lot of people were, sort of freaking out because they thought it was going to be a political Oscar mm -hmm. show, and I have to say, I think, <laughs> Everybody at the Oscars said, oh, wait, this is about the movies and what we're doing. Forget yeah. about him. Yeah. <laughs> Forget yeah. about him. Kind of, yeah. You know? Yeah. Here and there. Here and there a joke. Yeah. yeah, I mean, jokes you expect it from the host. Yeah. Right. But, you know, the artist, except for, of course, the, one of the artists who wasn't there, who should have been there, oh. is the gentleman who uh, had been put yeah, out with director. the band. Yeah. yeah. You know, so, I mean, the summer was there. But, um, and a lot came from Jimmy uh, Kimmel, I'm told. A, a lot of the funny. Yeah. So, yeah. take a look. This broadcast is being watched live by millions of Americans and around the world in more than 225 countries that now hate us. I want to say thank you to President Trump. I mean, remember last year when it seemed like the Oscars were racist? <laughs> you know, we're more than two hours into the show and Donald Trump hasn't tweeted at us once. <laughs> and I'm starting to get worried about him. <laughs> I love that. I That's cute. I mean, was he watching? You would, you would oh, think sure he was watching, watching I'm right? I'm sure he probably he has ten screens up, and it's like CNN. Yeah. You know, like, what are yeah. they going to say about me? Yeah, exactly. Because they didn't.